If you've ever played Yu-Gi-Oh! with any sort of respectable strategy above a pile of cards you pulled from McDonald's promos, you've probably looked at your cards and gone, man, this deck is so good at this. But what if it did that, and that, and that, and next thing you know you're on some sketchy Yu-Gi-Oh! card maker website, and now you're trying to convince your friends that your favorite archetype is actually dog water, and a plus three one card starter is the key to keep it meta viable. If these drunk ramblings sound familiar, it's because you have engaged in custom card behavior. The creation of bonkers support precisely forged through hundreds of hours of playtesting, shoring up every weak hand, and blowing the ceiling off the good ones. But as the years go by and new sets brought in new toys for duelists everywhere, a disturbing trend was beginning to arise. Power creep became the name of the game, cards began to do whatever and whenever they wanted to. Raigeki in the end phase, if the card leaves the field. Doesn't matter if it was banished, tributed, or destroyed. On a card that can quick effect non-targeting banish an opponent's monster, while sending extra deck monsters to the graveyard to plus off during the set end phase. Needless to say, cards began to outpace even the most imaginative pet deck enthusiast. The distance between one man's fever dream and new card by the Konami team became thinner and thinner. And not to alarm you, but these custom cards are already walking among us, coming to an opponent's hand near you. In American football, there's a term called the Andy Dalton line, named after quarterback Andy Dalton, which denotes the level of play for an exceedingly average quarterback. Yu-Gi-Oh, on the other hand, has the Mathmex Circular line, which is the line at which we've crossed the point of no return, where brain rot has officially reached the Konami design team. And hey, look, that's where we are now. In my opinion, Mathmex Circular is the poster child for official custom cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! Circular arrived as the lone support card in Power of the Elements for the Mathmex strategy, and managed to elevate the deck from obscurity to quite literally the toppest of tables. Circular's insane resume includes special summoning himself as an extender, all for the low, low cost of sending a math deck monster from your deck to the grave, which, if you're familiar with the limited card Foolish Burial, you know is a powerful effect. Or, technically, cost. Then, if a math mech monster is summoned while this card is on the field, you get to add one math mech spell trap from your deck to your hand. Now, I could sit here and rant about how crazy the nuances of this card are, how they thought a simple attack lock would be enough of a restriction, or how every deck would immediately be meta if they had their own math mech circular. Except, that isn't true. See, a few months before Power of the Elements and the official crossing of the circular line, duelists were given access to Simorg, Bird of Perfection, who is an extender who summons himself when a winged beast is summoned, and can send one Simorg monster from your deck to your graveyard as a cost, to add one Simorg spell trap from your deck to your hand. In an alternate reality, Joshua Schmidt would have an irrational fear of Simorg and calling for the ban of the Bird of Perfection. I think the existence of cards like these really adds a lot of flavor to the pet deck support hotline. On one hand, there's almost no limit to the power of cards Konami could whip out in their next prints. Your favorite bottom feeder archetype might be the next recipient of the custom card sweepstakes and immediately rocket up to meta stardom. And suddenly you'll have to explain, yeah dude, I actually did play them before they were good. On the other hand, the meteoric mediocrity of Simorg Bird of Perfection shows that, no, your deck isn't actually, quote, one card away, and you really need to step away from the copium. Sometimes these game-breakingly powerful support cards do more harm to their respective decks than good. In the same set that brought the Ashizu cards, your friendly neighborhood synchro laddering zombies, the Mayakashi, got the card Ghost Meets Girl, a masterful Mayakashi Shiranui Saga which supported their iconic synchro spam gameplay by being a boring turn skip floodgate. Perhaps what I hate most about Konami's new custom card policies is the inconsistency of it all. We all have that one friend who puts a lot of thought into making interesting, syncretic support pieces for their beloved decks, and the other friend who just wants to see the dueling world burn. Turns out, the Konami design team is made up of those two people exactly. Why can Mathmex Circular do all these crazy effects in one turn, effectively becoming a one-card starter that plays around hand traps, yet Sky Striker's Alarion can't even equip itself the same turn it sends a Striker spell to the grave? 
Chaos Ruler's Mill 5 might be a little too powerful for a generic monster in the extra deck. We should probably ban him in every format. But what if we put that effect on two separate main deck monsters? All that's left is to answer the question, if this is what support looks like in 2023, what lies ahead?